Lots of wild news in the Tesla space as the first leaked image inside of the production Cybertruck surfaces, and we have all the details on it to share. Plus, the latest Model Y, the batteries inside them can charge significantly faster than previously expected. Plus, a new study shows that Tesla's reputation has taken a huge hit, but try telling that to the Model Y as it has now become the world's best-selling car. All that and more starts right now. All right, so let's start this out with the Cybertruck because there is a new image out of the interior of the Cybertruck. Now, this image is actually from the shareholders meeting, which was over a week ago. Somehow they've kept the lid on this, but it's out now. And you know, we've seen so many of these images over the years from the outside. Now you're in the driver's seat. Now you get to see exactly what I'd imagine you're going to expect with the Cybertruck because of course we're very close to delivery here in the next couple of months in production. What are we seeing here as far as the detail? This sort of hybrid yoke. Yeah. So it looks to me like they took the yoke, which it initially was going to have. And a lot of people have not been crazy about the yoke. So they decided to kind of give you this in between a wheel yoke sort of look. I'm not personally crazy about that. How do you feel? <laughs> I'm with you as well. I like the yoke as it is. I appreciate the round as it is, but together mixed like this, maybe not so much, but we'll see. Tesla's gone back and forth between it. So, But again, we're not seeing any stocks with this picture. So it looks like it's stockless. And what I think is the best part of it is that the horn is in the center. <laughs> yes, there's no button for the horn and the picture is here. So what we're noticing here again, stockless, which lends credence to what the Project Highland, the Model 3, and eventually Model Y are going to have potentially very soon. And then of course the horn in the middle, which again adds to what the Model 3 and Y could have with this similar sort of a setup. I also noticed the software on the screen is a little different. I remember when we were in the Cybertruck for that event, the person who was driving it, one of the engineers, was telling us it'll have its own software dedicated to the Cybertruck. It's all new UI. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the navigation here as well, just so you know which way we're going. Jack and the font I noticed on the low temperature, maybe it's just me. And again, maybe I'm using what I remember seeing in person as well, but the font was different then. It looks like it's different on this as far as the center screen. So perhaps you get a little bit of a variability with the Cybertruck mm -hmm. having its own unique triangular sort of design. Now, something that I've noticed is that it has this huge empty front space. That is a giant dash area in front of you, so. It just seems very wasted right now. Take a wingspan to clean that one off, absolutely. And then also, if you look kind of from the side angles, there's been some photos that have come out and you can see the A pillar there it looks pretty large, like it could get in the way of your vision while you're driving. Well, Elon Musk has always said, you won't need that <laughs> full self-driving vision, will will take care of that. So I'm sure that'll be the stance when it comes to any sort of impaired visibility maybe. They're also noticing something here where the extra seat would be up front. Now you've got a tonneau cover matching the, the truck bed, retractable area there where you have a charging pad and the cup holders beneath it as we've seen in previous photos. Again, I think I would have preferred the six seat yeah. option just because I'm a fan of having extra seats whenever possible. And I think that extra seat, they shrunk down by 10 plus percent the entire size of the truck because so many people complain of how large it was. Yeah, so one of the comments I've noticed on here is that the picture itself looks like the truck is narrower, which you yeah. said, you know, they've shrunk it down. This probably is a mobile phone. You'd have to use that the ultra wide zoom, the 0.5 zoom to get your legs into the shot like this. That always creates a pretty significant distortion. So that's probably what we're seeing here. But again, it's unlike any other truck on the road. Definitely. So, so it's gonna distort your brain uh, regardless. Yes, it's definitely one of those um, trucks, those vehicles where you either love it or you hate it. Yeah. Or sometimes, you know, you can grow into it as well. But I'm curious to know what you guys think about it. And also if you see any interesting things in this photo, let us know in the comments below. There's definitely some interesting comments that we've already seen so far. Next, new Model Ys with BYD batteries are apparently charging much faster. So before BYD and Tesla were kind of seen as competitors, but about a year ago, they started working together. Yeah, the batteries we're talking about are being produced out of Giga Berlin. They are LFP batteries that are packaged in blade-like format, which are the BYD makes, they're called blade batteries. And it looks like some of the local owners in Germany are finding some pretty significant differences differences as it relates to charging speed and peak charging power with these BYD batteries that are in these Model Ys. Take a look at this chart here that kind of shows you how fast of a charge rate we're seeing with this. It looks like they're able to maintain 170 kilowatts of charging through at least 50% state of charge and up to 100 kilowatts at about 70% state of charge, which would mean you're able to bring your car up to 80% in less than 30 minutes. Now, previously, when we've talked about LFP batteries, we've talked about their disadvantages, one of them being slower charging speeds, 
Well, it looks like these BYD batteries are actually able to maintain that peak charge rate at a much higher state of charge than the CATL batteries in Model Ys. I saw one of the commenters actually say that that was most likely because it has more surface area yes. um, when it's in this blade the like long blade-like structure allows that surface area for, for more cooling to take place, right? So it makes sense if that's the reason. It looks like with the structure of these battery cells, it's able to maybe dissipate some of that heat off a little more rapidly. So. so I see these stories all the time in the news where people try to sue Tesla because a sudden unintentional acceleration, acronym is also SUA, so you know, they're gonna <laughs> sue ya. The data actually just came out from a West Vancouver ferry where someone just plowed right into the ferry and again, it looks like it was pedal miss application. Yes, Tesla was able to provide data, several hundred pieces of evidence showing exactly what went wrong. It was the go pedal that was applied, not the brake pedal. Of course, it does suddenly accelerate because it's an electric car, so. You know, there has, like this has happened to me actually before, I hate to even, what? like, it has happened to You've me. You've hit the go pedal instead I of the I have, brakes? I have. Now, when I was like an, a new driver, it happened to me. Like. 20 years ago you're talking about. Yeah, like okay. 20 years right. ago. Not not in our Tesla, okay. <laughs> but it has happened before and I can see it happening. And you know, I feel bad that this person was ticketed, but obviously they caused quite a bit of damage. Yeah. Um, but you know, we see these over and over again. There's one recently with a Rebel driver in New York. There was another one in Norway last weekend of a Model Y taxi driver that said it suddenly accelerated and went forward and Tesla is easily able to provide the data that shows it was actually the other way around. Mm -hmm. Now there is sudden unintentional braking called phantom braking. We all uh, we all see that happen all yeah, the time. But that, that's definitely but a thing. that happens. It's the other way around, but not yeah. not accelerating. Yeah, Tesla <laughs> actually has a blog post about this as well that you can go yeah. read where they basically clear their name that this is not the car's fault. This is human error. So this is not a Tesla specific problem. Obviously, yeah. people like to sue a Tesla. <laughs> so when somebody is pressing on the accelerator and going faster, they actually press harder because they think that they're braking and then they just go faster and they completely lose control. And that's sort of what happens in these cases. And then you can't possibly fathom that you actually had your foot on the wrong pedal and that's what was happening. So next up, SpaceX has launched a new service for its Starlink internet service that allows you to get internet almost anywhere on the planet <laughs> while you're in motion. Yes, anywhere on the oceans, anywhere in the deserts, it's called Starlink Mobility. The receiver mounts permanently on top of your car, it's $2,500 and it connects to some 4,000 low earth orbit satellites. Uh, and of course you get internet connection with download speeds, get this up to 220 megabits a second. And it's about a $250 a month uh, commitment as well to get the service uh, up and running. But I know incredible. Our, our kids are gonna want this one. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure they will. It is already up and running as a test on school buses in parts of Arizona. And they're saying that they'll allow kids to get their homework done <laughs> leading up to homework. going to school <laughs> yeah, and coming home. Yeah. I know, exactly. Yeah, I wonder how <laughs> How much homework will actually be getting done and those kids are probably like yes like Chat gtp to... homework <laughs> oh yeah exactly I'll, they'll be using yes <laughs> there, there is a 30-day return policy on the hardware meaning that if you're not happy with it that hardware that was 2500 dollars you get all of that money back you can return it you just lose out on the monthly payment you made um, I almost think this might make for some good content if we we're doing it. To I do know, this. but realistically, this is definitely more for first responders and they'll be receiving priority to be able to get this service first before any of you guys out there. So, you know, tell your kids they need to be patient. Would love to sign up for something like this. It's a little bit pricey. It would be nice to have. More value than FSD. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> yeah, it gets you something right away. Next up, I love this one. We have a robotic charger that's being tested in a Texas airport right now. Yeah, these robots are a part of a pilot program happening at the Dallas-Fort Worth airport at DFW where they're set up between right now and May all the way through the month of August. And these robots with four cameras on them, sensors, they drive up to your EV at whatever parking area you are and the charger comes up to you, gives you DC fast charging. I imagine you then have to kind of lift the wand and plug it in yeah. yourself. I don't think it's quite there yeah. with that whole Tesla style snake that's been talked <laughs> about quite yet. I imagine that it's more of an app. Yes, the app gets you to call it up and it comes to your spot and it basically makes any spot an EV charging spot. It takes away the complexity of maybe the icing concern of gas mm -hmm. cars blocking charging stations. And then you have this come to you where you can park anywhere you want yeah. within these public lots and you can get a quick charge there as well. So. Uh, it's a pretty cool concept. So is it CCS then? Does it have a magic dial? <laughs> I think it is CCS <laughs> at the very least. And there's, there's screens on both sides as well to generate revenue from advertising. 
but I'd imagine right now being in this uh, public early program, they have uh, workers there that are kind of helping you through the process as you download the app and call up the charger to your spot. But it's a pretty yeah. cool pretty I cool think concept. it's really cool. Like I see a lot of application for this because you yeah. could really turn any parking lot into a charging station. Yeah. And if you guys live in the Dallas area, go send us a picture or a video of this. I would love to see more and see it actually tested out. So I remember Elon Musk originally talking about the Model Y and saying that it had the potential to be the best selling car in the world overall. And it looks like it might actually be there now. It's pretty crazy. Cause you know, when you hear that, you hear so many of his predictions, it sounds like it's a long shot. Now based on Jado Dynamics, this is an auto analysis firm. They're releasing the information on their estimates, looking at some 53 key markets around the world to see how many cars have sold in Q1 of 2023. They're estimating the Model Y has outsold every other car with 260 67,000 units sold around the world. They're up about 69%. No pun intended there for Elon Musk's number, but they're up 69% year over year, where yeah. the second place car last year, which was the Toyota Corolla, is down 10%. They sold 256,000 units. And when you look at last year, the Model Y had sold upwards of 700 plus thousand units. That was third place in the world. That was behind the Corolla and the RAV4. Now the script has flipped a little bit. The Model Y is taking the lead in Q1. It's pretty incredible when you consider Toyota has almost every single market in the world covered as far as where you can buy their cars. Tesla, of course, is a higher end, more premium vehicle. Mm -hmm. It's uh, not in reach for most people in general, but then of course it's not available in a lot of markets around the world either. So it's a pretty incredible accomplishment this yeah. early into the game. And I, what I love about this is seeing an EV. Yeah take this lead right here. And what the Model Y also has is it's a crossover as well as being an EV. So I think it appeals to so it many does. people. Um, so when are you gonna get rid of the Model 3 <laughs> and get a Model we Y? We just paid for it. We just paid it off this last week. That is true, yes. <laughs> it's hard to get rid of it. But so definitely use our referral code when you go to buy your Model Y. So Tesla might not give a damn about their reputation, but they is should. Is that a Taylor Swift reference? That is, that is. <laughs> okay. But they should because they actually dropped 50 spots on the Axios Harris Poll reputation. They went from 12 to 62. Yeah, Kim, they're still in the good category overall with excellent scores in their trajectory, vision, and products, but they did drop to the fair spot when it comes to citizenship, trust, and character of the brand. And number 62 is not a bad spot. You're still right up there with the companies like Delta, McDonald's, Wendy's, just to name a few, AT&T, and also Walt Disney Company. But when you look at their competitors in the auto sector, at number 32, we have Ford. At number 13, we have Honda. And number six, we have Toyota. So yes, they are definitely competitors, at least in people's perception, that are more maybe reliable, trustworthy of a brand than Tesla right now. And I think that's so interesting because we just talked about the Model Y being the best-selling vehicle in the world and kind of beating some yeah. of these other vehicles, <laughs> but maybe their reputation and how well they sell are two different things. Yeah. And I'm curious if this maybe has something to do with Elon Musk, you know, going on Twitter and the all that. The perception is definitely altered because most people won't be able to tell you who the CEOs of the other companies are, right? Now, Twitter is not the only Musk-led company that was on this Axios top 100 reputation list. In fact, you look all the way down at the very bottom, 97 is Twitter, and it's right there, right next to the Fox Corporation, next to the Trump Organization, and also FTX. This actually does put it in the poor category for Twitter, but get this, this is actually better than where it was last year. That's really interesting, actually. Let us know what you guys think about this and all the stories that we talked about. Um, and thank you again for tuning in with us. Please check out our merch. If you want to have a cyber summer like we are, um, look at the boxes down below, purchase one. It all goes back to supporting our channel. And we'll catch you guys next time. Take care.